Attribution framework is a way to identify and describe who you will be. What are the attributes of your market, knowing what they are, and what are the key factors and features that the industry is competing on? Because we really don't want to compete on the same factors and features as everyone else in the marketplace. We want to find the white space. This is a great way to actually see the space that we can own in the marketplace. In my first company, it was really, really competitive market space, and we had to find a way to differentiate. This was a great tool to help us to do that. In my second company, we actually built this up before we actually opened the doors to the business. We had that luxury. And there was lots and lots and lots of white space. It was amazing how much more confidence it gave us that we were gonna do the right things in the marketplace as well. Uh, right things to actually achieve our three year highly achievable goal. When we think about the attribution framework, we wanna come up with as I said, the characteristics, the attributes of the marketplace. We want to identify our key competitors that are playing in the arena. Today, you might already be differentiated and this will help confirm it. If you're not, you'll see this very obviously. And after we come up with the attributes, we come up with the companies we're competing against, as well as our own company, we want to actually rank each of the competitors as well as ourselves on a scale of one to five. We want to do this how we're doing today. And we'll come up with, you know, a table that will graph. This is the graph, the picture that we want to help find the white space. What you're looking at right now, it's clearly an organization that decided to do some activities and decided not to do some activities. And in this particular case, you can see that they decided to be really good at offering dependable products at consistently low price and offering you know, customer service. At the other end of the spectrum, they decided you know, not to do installation service, not to offer financing and so on. In between, they're doing a few things, but this was a pure decision to find the white space in the marketplace. They're actually decided as a company that these are their differentiating actions that is going to actually matter to their core customer. The graph you're looking at right now is taking all the competitors in the marketplace as well as the company. And the company is a clear bluish purplish line going from left to right as the high as five coming all the way down to the to the right uh, as one. They've decided on these actions. All the other colors are the other competitors. You can see how competitive this space is. This company that actually decided on these characteristics, these actions are only serving companies who want to buy building products, minimum size of pallet with a credit card delivered to their building site. This is not for the core customer of a Home Depot who would go and buy one light bulb, one hammer, one nail. That is not their core customer. They are very clear on what matters to their core customer, which is a builder who needs supplies delivered to the site en masse. So let's step through and build up an attribution framework. This tool can be downloaded at shannonsusco.com. The first thing we want to do is let's come up with the attributes of your market. So if you're by yourself or with your team, it doesn't matter. We've got to agree on what the attributes are. If you are doing this with your leadership team, I actually suggest you break into a couple of groups so you get a full view and a good discussion on all the attributes um, of the marketplace. And then what you do after that is you'll agree on what the top attributes are. The next thing I want you to do is then rate your organization on a scale of one to five, five being the best, one being the worst, on how you're doing. I just wanna caution you, you can't be a five at everything. And, you, and you, know, you, can't, you can be a one at everything and that'll give you some good ideas on what you might wanna do differently. But be as honest as you can. And I've gotten lots of feedback that this is super subjective. It is. 
What this tool is for is to drive the discussion. Be as honest with yourself as possible about where your company is actually doing well and what you've decided to do well. After you've actually rated your company, rate you know, your two to three top competitors, the ones that you talk most about in your organization. Put them in you know, competitor one, competitor two, and then rank them, same way. One being the worst, five being the best. So as you can see, as this builds up, you can see you know, I'm working through this example with you. The next step you wanna do is you wanna to go to the graph, which is on the second page of this tool. And you actually want to write the attributes at the bottom of the page in the gray section with what attributes your company is best at. And we're gonna go from left to right, writing in you know, what were all your number fives, the attributes that you ranked as number five, and then number four, number three, number two, number one. Then what I want you to do is actually map your company onto the graph. So it should start with, you know, if you're going, you know, five, four, three, two, one, you know, start on the left-hand side, you know, up in the five category, you're gonna work your way all the way down to the right-hand side, your line will end up, you know, rating whatever those attributes as a one. The next step I want you to do is then map graph out your first competitor. How you rank them, graph it out. And then, after you do that, I want you to graph the second competitor and the third competitor. You really just want your top competitors, otherwise this gets really, really um, confusing. You wanna talk about the ones that you're bumping up against the most, because those are the ones you wanna differentiate. Those are the ones where you wanna find either differentiate, i.e., you know, appeal to a different core customer, find the white space. So here's a third. You can see what we graphed here, the green line is, you know, my company. And you can see we went into the marketplace um, as going, we are gonna do these five things well, and we decided not to do the things on the right well. And if we did those five things well that mattered to our core customer, uh, they would buy for a profit. We also, you can see the exact opposite. Our biggest competitor in the marketplace is the yellow line. They are exact opposite of what we were. Beautiful, that's what you're looking for. Find the white space. Now, this is done you know, in a way that we actually you know, went into the marketplace thinking about this, you know, looking to execute these activities. If, if you haven't you know, thought about it that way and the graph that you're looking at is you know, really quite busy and you all look the same, maybe you're all rated the same. That means there's gonna be a lot of white space above the line. Sometimes there's white space to the left or to the right. We're looking to find those things and what I would suggest you do now is map in, forecast the line that in three years time where you want to be. What part of the market do you wanna own? This is about your strategy. Michael Porter talked about strategy differentiating actions to create that unique and valuable position. That's what this graph represents. Find your way to a unique and valuable position that your customers will buy at a profit and you will make decisions on how you're gonna differentiate and you'll drive the company to deliver on those actions. Mm -hmm.